Good morning. Good morning. I guess we don't need that, do we? Before he starts talking, I'm going to... No, you do need that. That's just Rob's. Oh, that's just um, Aaron's. Before he starts, uh, he's going to say this before I do. If I don't, This is my weaker brother, Rob Butterfield. <laughs> Actually, that's usually how I introduce him, so he stole it. <laughs> We, we've never, we've never kind of got up and talked like this before together, uh, so, so bear with us, please, as we kind of go through and share some memories and kind of share some of our witnessing experiences. Uh, we just want to start out uh, uh, that Doug and I met a few years ago. I was, I was saved in uh, 1999, and, and when were you saved, Doug? In 2001. Yeah, 2001, and, and uh, my wife and I had just changed church and started going to this other church, and, and uh, I kept seeing this guy, and I'm like, I've seen him somewhere before. Where did I see him? And, and I could tell he was kind of looking at me the same way. Well, one day we uh, met in the hallway, passed in the hallway, and we started talking, and we found out that he worked on a blasting crew out at one of the mines, uh, where we live, and I delivered explosives to him, and we, <laughs> and we had to recognize because because you know you wear your hard hat and your glasses and your all your gear and everything, so so we didn't really recognize each other. So so we kind of we kind of started talking from there, and then uh, our church at the time was was doing outreaches in the community, and so we we got involved in in. Uh, outreaches together and that's kind of what draws together uh as uh, far as doing evangelism so uh i and i grew up uh uh ex or uh mormon and then be, of course when i got saved i'm ex lds now so and i grew up jehovah's witness so that was kind of a neat way how god orchestrated the two of us getting together and you know after we were saved, and and um, like he said, we, we didn't recognize each other at all, you know, because we wear hard hats and stuff at work, and then it just kind of hit us at <clears throat> one day at church that that we know each other, and then we just hit it off from there, and and we started doing evangelism there, and then and then Rob came here, he came here for his first time, and I wasn't, I would, I didn't come that time, and I don't remember why. But there must have been some reason why, but he came by himself. <laughs> yeah. that, that's not why, but... I was. I was chicken. I, well, I was chicken once I came here, but it wasn't before I came here. So anyway, he came here, and he came back all excited, and he was telling me about everything that had happened here and whatnot. We got to go. We got to go. So we, I think the first year we came here and pulled my tent trailer down, yeah. and we... We, we were told about the Christian ghetto down at the, at the Manti Park. Is that right? Manti Park? Yeah. So we pull up yeah, there and we, we, we find, you know, we, he, he had met some people from the year before, but I didn't know anybody. So, so we went and we met, you know, so many people and, and found out, you know, that's, that's where we belong there. So, and then we started, then we started, you know, coming here to the trainings and whatnot. And what an experience. Just yeah. went from there. So, yeah, I, uh, I, like I said, I got saved in 1999, and uh, and being Mormon, you're kind of pretty much thrown into an evangelistic mode, whether you like it or not, especially because of your family. And uh, so, of course, witnessing with my family, uh, you know, is, is always really hard. And of course, I'm, I'm a very, I, I started right off being a very gracious witness. Uh, and that's why my family didn't talk to me for a long time. So, but I was like, I was like a three month uh, old Christian and I started dating my wife, who's my wife now, and she's, uh, she was able to guess. And of course, I didn't know about we're not supposed to be unequally yoked. So uh, anyway, we, of course, we started talking about Mormonism. And, and of course, me being such a gracious person, uh, 
I'm not, we were talking about this story here at uh, while we were eating donuts, but but uh, one one time uh, my wife Laura was saying, you know, the Book of Mormon's about my people, and I go, I go, your people. The Lamanites were the bad guys in the Book of Mormon. I go, Laman, Lamanite, you got it? You know, so I, I, I'm really surprised she continued dating me. because we, we had some pretty rough conversations <laughs> over there, but she ended up getting saved. Uh, oh, gosh, what was it, about six, eight months later, and we got married about a year later, and so... Uh, and then I got, thank you. Then I got involved with Witnesses for Jesus and, and Christy Harvey, uh, which is Christy Darlington now. And so that's how I learned about Manti, the Christians coming to Manti. And so I thought, I got I to gotta go there. I got it, you know. So I took a week off of vacation and, and came out here by myself the first time. And I was pretty scared and... Uh, I remember the first Christians I met was Keith Walker and and Doug and Gail from uh, Shadow Mountain, uh, and uh, and it just kind of rolled from there. But but uh, 2006 is the first year I came, and then Doug and I came in 2007. So, uh, but in preparation to come the first time talking to Christy, she gave me a lot of information, but of course that doesn't prepare you for what you're really in for. <laughs> and, and so I made, up, I made up a bunch of tracks out of my Mormon understanding, uh, some different topics on, uh, on business cards, because she was saying big tracks usually don't go and they're hard to take tracks. And so I thought I'll make little business card tracks. So. So uh, I came, came here and got out on the street the first night, and I was pretty scared, believe me. I was pretty scared. A lot worse than I am right now. <laughs> and uh, uh, I just stood out there, and I just remember praying, I'm going to stand here and hand tracks out, but God, if you want me to talk to somebody, you're going to have to bring them to me. And yeah, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. <laughs> As you know, if you stand out there and you keep chumming, they'll, the fish will come. So, so anyway, uh, but yeah, when I got back from that trip uh, and I was telling Doug about it, I said, we got to go. Now, he's, he's, he's uh, ex-JW and he's going to go to a Mormon event. So I wasn't sure if he was... Uh, he was in for that, but we talked about it and finally decided, okay, yeah, let's go. So, and I'll let Doug do some speaking here. Yeah, that's, um, he reminds me when he's talking about, you know, when he first started witnessing, when he first got saved. And I'd, ne you know, when I got saved, I had, um, I'd, I wasn't, you know, actually real into the Jehovah's Witness religion at the time. I was born and raised in it. I had went out and did my thing for a while and always thought I'd get back there someday. And then my brother-in-law started sharing the truth with me. This is, this is why we do what we do, is because, of, because there were people that cared enough about us to offend us. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. With the truth. And... Um, but my brother-in-law, he, he came about it a little different way. He was raised Roman Catholic, and, and his brother committed suicide, and, and he had to find out for himself what he believed. So he, he started seeking and searching himself, and he ended up being born again, and he, he was my brother-in-law. So he knew what I believed, and he began to witness to me and share with me what the, God, what the Bible says about Jesus being God, which is something that I had never seen before because then blinders were there couldn't see couldn't hear <clears throat> I'm sure people had showed me that before I'm sure I'd read it before but it would just never did click and and God was working on my heart drawing me unto himself and and this guy was sharing with me <clears throat> and so I had to find out for myself too so I started reading the Bible for myself and it wasn't long and 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 I 
kneeled down beside my bed and prayed the prayer and, and, and said, God, I don't know how you can be three in one, but I'm sure your word is telling me you are. So I prayed to Jesus and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I got saved. <laughs> and I got up from that prayer and I knew something had happened to me. I mean, something different had, had happened to me. <laughs> I'm like... It was like, I remember when I'm praying this prayer, it's like everything's dark. And, 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 and then, you know, things are, it's like running a motorcycle across clay, you know, everything's just muddy. And then when I prayed that prayer, it was like running a squeegee across the wet window. And it was just, and things were clear. And I knew something had happened to me in that prayer. So I took off and I went down and thought, you know, resume life as normal. But life wasn't the same. I mean, I was still, you know, going out. I was a, going to the bars and shooting pool and drinking beer and all that stuff. And it was just like, didn't want to be there anymore. And so, you know, I started studying. I wanted to be home. You know, I had been, you know, raising a family and, and just they weren't my priority. So I wanted to be home. And I wanted to be a husband and, and, a, and, a, and a father to my kids. And, and then, and then, you know, I read about the church. So I ended up, you know, going out and seeking, you know, the body of Christ and ended up at Grass Valley. And that's where we met. That's my heart. You know, Chip asked us to share our heart. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And that's why we, you know, can stand out there on the streets and sometimes not even get in a conversation. But we know God's working and, for, and everybody's experience out there is different. Last night, I, didn't, I had a couple of conversations, but nothing real spiritual. But I was talking to people like Jennifer, you know, who, who I've seen here a few times. And I was talking to Tom, you know, for a long time. And that is a part of Manti that I'm going to miss too, big time. Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, we think we need to be out there sharing with the Mormons. We need to be converting people. But at the same time, that the big, huge, great thing about this whole Manti experience is, is like they always say, and what an encouragement it is to have everybody come and fellowship and, and be a part of, of what it is that we're doing here. But I'm a big chicken, so <laughs> that's why I have a sign on a pole, because I just like to stand there and let people come to me. I'm not a confrontational person. I'm very shy. I, I have a hard time just going up and handing tracks out to people. <laughs> I have a hard time, you know, going and getting into conversations with people. So that's why I hold the sign. And one of my greatest memories here is the first time I came, I was just going to sit along the sidelines in my chair and I was going to watch and I was going to see what's going on. And I, w I wasn't, you know, ready to get out there again. And Mr. Chip Thompson, just as he's doing today at the last conference, get me out of my comfort zone, comes over. And I'm sitting there in my chair and, he, and with my sign and, and my pole, and I'm just waiting. I'm going to get out there, and he just says, you need to come right on over here, right <laughs> at the front entrance of the temple, and that's where you need to be. So he takes me over there, and <laughs> that's where I am. So when you see that face that he does, you know, when you could share that was me, that you got that from me. <laughs> that was me. Because it didn't take long, and Rob's chuckling over here because he knew that I was, when I prepared to do this sign thing that I was going to be, you know, it was going to be, and I, and I was overwhelmed. I mean, I had whole youth groups, you know, surrounding me, and people firing shots all over the place, and I did had no idea what I was doing. So I was that guy, you know. But you know, but God never gave me more than what I could handle, and I learned from here how to handle. A situation like that you know you don't have to answer everybody at the same time you, you're focusing on somebody and and telling the other people you know I'll get to you next you know I'm speaking to this person now you know I learned that I learned everything that I know about evangelism from here because this is such a great venue for that and I can't imagine you know any other place where you can come where you can meet with experienced people in the ministry where you can learn from them and then you go out there and put it into practice. There, I, I, there's, no, there's nothing like that. I hope we can find something else like that. I'm, I'm just going to butt in for a minute about his sign. Because actually his, his sign, what's on his shirt and on his sign, is, was one of my original cards. And so 
So he came up with this himself because of me telling him that, yeah, Christians carry signs and all this stuff over there. So, so he decided he's going to use that card and make a sign. And he talked about it. And, of course, I kept encouraging him. And I would laugh to myself because I knew that if he went out there with a sign, it was like taking a big chunk of beef and throwing it right in the middle of a pack of wolves. <laughs> And that's exactly what it looked like. I'm serious. That's what it looked like. He's over there. <laughs> but, but he hung in. He hung in. He, he would get his hand up if he needed help, and I'd come over because I, because I had, not that I was good. It was because I had LDS experience, so I knew some of those questions they'd be asking. So I'd just kind of jump in and help him when he needed it. But. <laughs> Pray for me. I've got till next Saturday. <laughs> next Saturday in a trailer with this guy. I mean, at the end of that, I'm ready to go home. On Sunday <laughs> and, be, and then we don't speak for probably six months. <laughs> we do. We kind of got a unique friendship. It's... it's it, we can because of our schedules, or, you know, when, when we're both working, uh, we kind of just doing our own things. So sometimes we don't even talk for months and then we get together and it's just like we just take off where we left. So it's kind of a unique deal. And then when we come out here, we just we've just found we work so good together that that we can fry each other's fish. It's OK. <laughs> it's, it's really it's OK because because we just jump in on each other and, and, and go with it. And we usually never lead out of the direction that we're going. So it's, it, it's almost kind of freaky how well we work. <laughs> yeah, my method, you know, my sign says is the Mormon Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. And, and that, that is, um, you know, I get all kinds of crazy comments. You know, people coming by and saying, yeah, he is the same Jesus and I'll just say keep searching <laughs> if they're not talk if they don't want to stop and talk to me you know I get a little my little drive by answers you know um, keep searching you haven't found him yet come on back you know let's discuss it and you know it puts the thought into the mind that's why I have that question on the sign also I have a Bible verse because a lot of them say there's only one Jesus stupid or something like that you know and I say well you know the Bible says there's going to be many of them you know, and there's going to be many false prophets who go out there and and preach false Christ. And so then I get into, you know, I love to share with them what Jesus said. You know, at, at, at Matthew 24, you know, he said, Not everyone that comes to me and says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only, the, you know, that's a big one. Not everyone who comes to me saying, Lord, Lord, will enter, you know. So I tell them, I said, that's the most important question that has to be answered. You have to know him. And not more importantly, he has to know you. And it's not that he doesn't know everyone. He's God. But relationally, they don't know him. And they'll be rejected. And I can't imagine anything more terrifying than hearing those words from Jesus, go away from me, I never knew you. And that is what is a big motivator for me to go out there and, and try to witness these people that are blind and lost and they have, you know, they have no idea. So. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I saw that from the beginning. That's what Doug, you know, he, uh, his, his heart is to share Jesus and, and, uh, and mine, uh, uh, as I kind of look back, I realized mine uh, was, uh, you know, in the, to use the Book of Mormon uh, to share, you know, who God is. And that's my heart as, as uh, you know, because the Book of Mormon teaches a different God than what the LDS Church teaches. And, and it kind of started early off before I even came to Manti and got involved in ministry is, is trying to witness to my mom and my daughter. They said, well, if you'll just read the Book of Mormon, which I had never read totally the Book of Mormon, but uh, lots of it. And so they challenged me to read the Book of Mormon and then they would talk to me. So I thought, great, that's a great idea. So I read the Book of Mormon. I sat down, 
I got my box of no-dos and, and my barf bag off to the side and my pen and my marker and I started reading the Book of Mormon and went through it pretty thoroughly, hope, thinking that we can get in that discussion. Well, that was quite a few years ago and they still haven't talked to me yet So on the Book of Mormon. But, but uh, a few years after we've been coming to uh, Manti and, and uh, Chip put the no sign rule out, you know, and we, we, uh, we live by it, and that's why we went with our t-shirts. Uh, I seen Tim Martin carrying a sign around that says, why don't Mormons believe the Book of Mormon? And I went up and I told him that is the coolest idea I've ever seen. <laughs> And, and so we kind of talked about it a little bit, and, and the next year I showed up, and I'd been thinking about it. The next year I showed up, and Tim Martin was there, and he didn't have his sign. And I go, where's your sign? That's the coolest idea. And he goes, oh, I just use it once in a while. And, I, and so I got his permission to use uh, what Tim Martin originally started with is, why don't Mormons believe the Book of Mormon? And, and so I kind of went from there because I usually got in conversations talking about who God is because talking to my mom, she, she finally admitted she knew she could, that it was wrong to think that she could become a God and who God was, but she was gonna continue believing Mormonism. And, and, so, and so that just always struck me, uh, you know, that, so that kind of became my heart and that's what I talked about. So, realizing reading the Book of Mormon that it does actually teach uh, biblical precepts of God and it doesn't line up with the LDS church. So, so I made tracks about that and of course later made, made a sign uh, which I usually use at Temple Square. But, but so I put all those verses down on a card and so I share, you know, I share uh, who God is by starting with the Book of Mormon. And of course, when they come up, the uh, last night, it's like I was invisible. Nobody wanted to talk to me. And the night before, I had to beat them off with a stick because they would, they'd look at my shirt and they'd go, what's that all about? And, and of course, I start right off. And I let them know I read the Book of Mormon. Uh, when I read the Book of Mormon, this is what I wrote down, and I realized it didn't line up with what the LDS Church taught, and so that's where we go into it. The, the problem is, is you usually end up on the Trinity, and you know how hard the Trinity is to, to explain to Mormons. So my first shirt had an Alma passage on there about one God, and so I decided, well, I'm going to challenge myself to, to be able to teach the Trinity better to LDS. So I changed it to a Trinity verse in the Book of Mormon. Uh, and so a lot of my conversations are about the Trinity. And then which you can always lead into salvation really easy because and a verse I use a lot uh, with the LDS people is John 17, 3, where Jesus is praying to his praying for his disciples to know the only that this is life eternal, to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And so that's my spiel to the Mormons. If you've got the wrong God, you, you can't have salvation, you can't have eternal life. And and so that's where my heart is, is to share uh, share who God is through by using the Book of Mormon. <laughs> And a lot of times, just like Doug, they, they laugh at this shirt and they laugh at your shirt. But the other night, a guy, I didn't even know a guy was watching me, but he had already looked up this verse and he come and asked me about it. And so I quoted it to him, which it says that this is the doctrine of Christ, the, the true and only doctrine of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God without end, amen. And, and so he goes, well, what does that say to you? And I says, it's the Trinity. The Book of Mormon is teaching the Trinity right there. And so we got in this great conversation for, I don't know, hour and a half or so and led into salvation. But, but shirts do work. Things like this work. Uh, I'm like Doug. I'm, I, it's hard for me to go out. So I throw a lot of chum out there, and I use shirts, and we use our signs to help uh, to help bring people in. 
and uh, and get them to come and talk to us. So uh, I'm not I'm not like like Keith and some of these guys. They're great at just coming up and starting a conversation. So I kind of use some of these cheat methods. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I Keith has some great shirts out there, and so uh, I'd suggest that you guys buy some shirts. So uh, because they're they are they're great. The Mormons look at them; they want to come over and find out what they are. So uh, another another thing too is is uh, I'll just challenge all of you uh, to read the Book of Mormon. Because what I found is a lot of Mormons, you get into conversation, they'll ask, have you ever read the Book of Mormon? And, and of course, I can answer yes, I can. Uh, so, and, and believe me, being a Mormon, this is their crutch. And they don't follow up much. They really don't. They listen to the prophets, but this is their crutch. And Joseph Smith said that it's the most correct book on the face of the earth. And man get it closer to it through its precepts than any other book. And it's their crutch, even though they don't follow it. And most everything they believe is from their prophets. So I challenge you, I challenge you to read the Book of Mormon. Uh, because it's a great way to share with Mormons. And it gives some validity to your witness if you said, yep, I've read the Book of Mormon. Because I know... I've talked to Mormons, and they said they really haven't read the Bible before, so it doesn't give them much credibility to make argument against the Bible. So the same, same thing. So if any of you want to take the challenge, I've got a few uh, extra <laughs> Book of Mormons here. You can take home and get your bottle of no-dos and your barf bag and your markers and do it. Yeah, we're, we're about done. I'm surprised we're almost close to getting our bell rung. <laughs> so, <laughs> we were worried about having enough to talk about up here. <laughs> yeah. One of our greatest memories we have to mention before we stop is being down in the park one night about 8 or 8.30, and I'm sure some of you are involved in, in this memory, but was it about 8 or 8.30? Remember, who was... Who it was, was Janelle. Janelle. Janelle came down the park because the Christians used to all go to the... The, the ghetto, I mean, almost all the Christians would stay at the ghetto, and now, now most of them have moved on, they've got domesticated, and now they go <laughs> live in dwellings. But, but, but anyway, Janelle came down to the park, and she, and she says, hey, let's go up the temple and pray. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, so, so a bunch of us went up to the temple, and we climbed the top of the hill, and we're by the temple, and we got in a circle, and we started... We started praying, and a temple guard comes along, and he goes, hey, you guys can't have prayer circles here. <laughs> and, and Keith, you know. This is you know, holy ground. We know you can't pray here. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> Keith, Keith's, uh, Keith's wit, he goes, well, can we have prayer squares? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget this guy you could see with Jeff about ready to implode. <laughs> But yeah, he was telling us you can't pray on holy ground. So he run us off. So we had to go down by the fence and pray. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, you had to have been there, but it was pretty comical. So, but, but that's how they view us. You know, that's how they view us. But, uh, you know, and a, another, another Doug used to give me crap all the time because he goes, wonder if you're going to run into any of your family down here, you know, <laughs> and, and lo and behold, I'm sitting there passing out tracks, I got a shirt on, got my shirt on, and I look over and here comes my niece and her husband walking down the street with their two oldest kids, and I go, well, here we go, <laughs> <laughs> so I walk on over there and go, Hi, Tammy and Dean, how you doing? And hand them a track, and they take the track. <laughs> and uh, there was a few small words, and then my uh, niece's husband goes, you're pathetic, and walks off, and they didn't talk to me for about five years. So they're just starting to talk to me now. So, so uh, yeah, I remember, thanks, Rob, because you brought that up about... Uh, your mother-in-law and I thought, yeah, I had one of those experiences too. So, but uh, 
but anyway, yeah, be encouraged. I mean, try to reach your families. Never give up on them, especially those of you who who are Christians, because who else is going to reach them if you don't? Um, my family has all but my sister, one sister, and her daughter are the only ones left in the JW religion. And my dad, my stepmother, my two brothers, and my sister have all left it. So, and in the in the eighteen years, so don't ever give up on them. Find a way, even if they, you know, find a way, you know, I write them letters and, and i be honest with you, I don't know if they read them or not, but I think they do, but I write them letters and, and I just, I'll never stop, you know, I've got, I've got a request up there, pray for Cindy and Chrissy because they're the last holdouts. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's all we got, unless you got a question, we got a couple of minutes, huh? Anyway, thanks, we appreciate it.